we will do like uh, step response and rise time so if you if you just quickly see yeah see <coughs> response or or the the frequency response and the time response of ideal frequency selective filters and in that as an example we considered ideal low pass filter so what we considered was what is the impulse response of an ideal low pass filter right. so we found the impulse response and then we said that uh, an ideal low pass filter will have zero phase response but a phase resp uh, a filter having linear phase response is also fine for us is, is also acceptable because a linear phase is nothing but introducing a delay in the in the signal in, in, in the output signal so then that that's how we considered an ideal LPF with linear phase and then we saw that its impulse response is nothing but delayed version of the ideal LPF with zero phase then yeah then today uh, so let's let's continue with the ideal low pass filter and then let's do the step response right so so step response is response of a system to the unit step function so yeah so uh, uh, if you if you have any difficulty please uh, let me know like uh, last time I saw a chart after uh, some time that the audio was not clear Be because once I go to the screen of writing this uh, once I go to this writing mode I cannot see the charts so maybe I should come once in a while to here and then keep seeing the chart okay so step response Response is the is the is the response of a system to U of T. Response to U of T. What what is U of T? U of T is a, is a unit step function, right? So and and we we found out previously that step response is given by running integral of zero minus infinity to T h of tau d tau so it is running integral of impulse response why do we call it running what 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 do we, we mean by this word running because if you are looking at the step response at time t you have to integrate from have to integrate till time t. If you are looking at the step response at time t dash, you should integrate till time t dash. So it, it keep accumulates the impulse response till the current moment in time. Right? <coughs> so uh, okay. So we 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 have seen that the ideal impulse response okay here of ideal LPF of course here we are we are considering with zero phase response that its its impulse response is something like this so we 
have to integrate this h of tau, right? h of t, right? So this is h of t, this is t, and and what what happens to its its integral? So let's say this is s of t. What is s of t? S of t is the unit step response, and it is given by running integral. Means means if if I am looking at the step response at this time. I have to integrate till this point. This this waveform h of t. I have to integrate only till this point. If I am looking at the step response at time t equal to zero, I have to integrate till till this point. Till till time e from from minus infinity to zero. So now I am I am looking at the step response at at some time at at some some time t. So uh, rather than writing the equation. It would be more useful if we write, if if we diagrammatically represent the step response. Right. See, in, in fact, you you can obtain these kind of plots using using the MATLAB software. If you have, like, you you should be having, like, most of almost all your colleges or universities will have MATLAB licenses. So, MATLAB software is is a You have to buy this, like in the sense the university has to buy this. Uh, but but th th there are also other softwares which are very similar to MATLAB called Scilab. So this is free. Uh, you, you you can Scilab Scilab and Octave. So these so these softwares you you can you can simulate all these things. Like you you, you can you can plot. The impulse resp response of an ideal low pass filter on your screen. Like the, you can plot the sync function, and you can integrate this. You can do numerical integration of this, and and then plot the step response and everything. So this MATLAB, or knowing one of these softwares, is is almost essential for any EC engineer. So MATLAB is very popular, uh, but uh, if If it cannot be bought by college or university, you can go to Scilab. Scilab is very similar to MATLAB, but but it's a free software. Yeah. So so what what I'm saying is that we will uh, okay. So let me mark these things. This is minus pi by omega c, <coughs> and and this is plus pi by omega c. So there are no problems with this, right? Yeah. Because if there is any problem, I get a short message. That's why I'm looking at this. Yeah. So back to the notes. So the impulse response is minus pi by omega c plus pi by omega c, and 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 we are remember we are integrating this. So let's mark here also minus pi by omega c. And this is pi by omega c. So if you if you see actually this curve is is also kind of a Linearly rises till till this point. It will be something like this. The if you, if you see it, so th there 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 will be an overshoot here. There will be an overshoot here. There will be an an undershoot here. And and the 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 main point to say is that. Uh, as the impulse response has got its main lobe, so we we call this in in a sync function. We call this as the main lobe, right? So this this portion, this portion we we call it as main lobe. As h of t has got. its main lobe 
between minus pi by omega c and plus pi by omega c right so major change major change in in it in the step response okay as the impulse response has got its main lobe between minus pi by omega c to plus pi by omega c the step response major change in step response in s of t sorry happens between minus pi by omega c and pi by omega c see uh, what i mean to say is but by the time we 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 start crossing this border and and we we integrate uh, so we will we'll accumulate more and more more value to the integral right so we we, we see the, the integral is raising raising from minus pi by omega c the integral is raising from minus pi by omega c and then it 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 reaches its maximum by the time we reach pi by omega c so by by the time we reach pi by omega c then then it, it gets kind of then it gets kind of saturated and there will be an overshoot and, and undershoot and and this this see what 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 what, what is our input input is this this is the unit step function and and this is the input so what we are looking at is when this unit step function is the input to the ideal low pass filter what is the output so this is the input so this is the input and this is the output and this output is obtained by integrating this impulse response that's why i'm, I'm plotting it here yeah so that means if you if you give this if you don't give any signal till time t equal to zero and suddenly the signal rises to unit value and then it, it is it is a unit step response you have a lag in the like see the, the the response of the filter doesn't increase all of a sudden it, it increases slowly so if, if if the input increases suddenly at some point the the, the output increases slowly something so that's why this is kind of it characterizes the rise time of the system so the the the, the response time or rise time is given by the unit step response so unit step response is a rough measure of the rise time which is a rough measure of the response time of the system so so let's let's write that down like yeah so so this this is called the the, the rise time so the, the the time it takes for the for the unit step response to rise is called this determines the rise time so this roughly determines the rise time fine Right, so the time it takes for the unit step response to respond to a unit step signal is called the rise time. So, and another thing is rise time tells us approximately. or roughly how much time it takes how much time it takes for the filter to respond in fact this this response time and rise time is valid for any kind of system any kind of linear time invariant system 
it need not be only for filter we just took ideal low pass filter as one example that's it so it it, it is like we, we can characterize the rise time and hence the response time for any linear time invariant system right so and and what 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 are the other points that we observe <coughs> this rise time is depending is is from minus pi by omega c to plus pi by omega c that means the rise time depends on the bandwidth of the filter right the rise time in this case is depends on the bandwidth of the filter if the bandwidth increases rise time decreases right if if wc increases then rise time decreases if if w c increases that means the bandwidth increases then rise time So that means rise time is inversely proportional to bandwidth. Right. Say, say if you if you if you are given a true or false question and then ask you to justify, uh, will will a will a filter having bandwidth 10 kilohertz has higher rise time or 100 kilohertz has higher rise time? You should be able to answer with reasoning. You should be able to. It's, it's not only enough to give only the re, only the answer but you should be able to give the reason that a, a rise time is proportional rise time is mainly from minus pi by omega c to plus pi by omega c and then as omega c is the bandwidth and if increase the bandwidth so on so forth right so yeah so that means the system response time response time is proportional to rise time so this is proportional to summer that implies response time is proportional to 1 by bandwidth see these these rise times uh, the And all you will come to know the importance of this rise time and, and say if you are working with a very fast systems like uh, if, then you cannot have a slow rise or, or a slow response system if you are working with uh, say high data rate communications or something like that so this is the, this is one of the very important very very important practical parameter while while designing filters right okay so with that uh, so let me see. Yeah. So with that, uh, let's move on to the uh, next topic, which is called Laplace transforms. However, uh, we we still have three topics left, like three three small topics left in this unit. So the, uh, this is fourth unit, right? So currently we are doing fourth unit, which is analysis of linear time invariant systems time and frequency analysis of linear time invariant systems but so in in this in this this we still are left with we still are left with autocorrelation cross correlation
and and polyvinyl criteria so th these things we will will revisit once we finish laplace transforms and jet transforms so laplace transforms and jet transforms are the next two units so once we finish that because because they take more time like it's it's important just like uh, it is important to understand fourier transforms well so it is it is very important to understand this uh, laplace transforms and jet transforms well uh, and and we need to spend more time on that whereas this autocorrelation cross correlation these topics can be can be covered quickly in, in one class so we will we'll do these things slightly later and and also it's beneficial uh, first to do the laplace transforms so let's let's go to that because there can be many problems from this from these topics like laplace and jet transforms <coughs> and yeah so uh, So to, to start with these things, so we, we have we have done Fourier transform, right? So Fourier transform, what what it does? Fourier transforms represents any signal x of t as a linear combination of complex exponentials. right so the fourier transforms represents any signal as a combination of linear as a combination of exponential signals but why do what did we say our motivation to go for exponential signals because exponential signals are the eigen functions of lda steps right so So let me write complex exponentials. Or eigenfunctions of LTI systems. And see, uh, we, we said uh, one e power st is one. OK e power st let's let's write this this as simply exponential signal and where s is a complex number so and e power j omega t is when s is equal to j omega right. so fourier transforms defines uh, signals in terms of linear combinations of e power j omega t so Fourier transforms expresses a signal x of t as a linear combination of uh, this this is complex exponentials as a linear combination of complex exponentials e power j omega t right but e power j omega t are not the only eigenfunctions yes e power j omega t is an eigenfunction because it's an exponential signal but a more more general more general exponential signals which are e power st are also the eigenfunctions are also the eigenfunctions of lti systems
here s can be a complex number or or it, it, it can be purely imaginary or it can be a pure complex number or whatever right so why don't we consider uh, expressing signals in terms of e power st why do we have to restrict ourselves to expressing signals in terms of e power j omega t that's the question uh, asked when before before they, they developed so here s is equal to a complex number say we we are thinking s is equal to sigma plus j omega okay so when an e power so with that motivation we define the laplace transform so the laplace transform expresses signals as a linear combination of exponential signals where the exponential signals are e power st they are not e power j omega t right and and laplace transform is a generalization of fourier transforms so that that, that also we'll see what what do we mean by generalization so laplace transform expresses a signal x of t in terms of e power st as, as, as a linear combination of complex exponentials and 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 also it's a generalization so lt is a generalization of u t sorry it's f t for a transform so laplace transforms is a generalization of for a transforms fine so let's let's define say for for a signal for a signal x of t we'll we'll prove this like no not prove we'll we'll see we'll see why do we say it's a it's a generalization and everything like when when we start doing example we'll do lot of examples in this so for a signal x of t the laplace transform is defined as x of s minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e power minus s t so this is this x of s so this x of s is the laplace transform for the signal x of t fine so you, you we we just defined the laplace transform for a signal x of t as x of s is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of t multiplied by the exponential e power minus st so x of s is the laplace transform lt of x of t and and it is denoted something like this say if x of t is the time domain signal then we call it lt x of s right so this notation is very similar to what we used uh, when we did fourier series or fourier transform for fourier series we used fs the letters here were fs and for fourier transform it was ft right so th this is the notation or or another notation is this L of x of t. That means Laplace transform of x of t is x of s. And and Laplace inverse of x of s is 
Microsoft. So we'll we'll, we'll come to the Laplace inverse inverse transform of uh, sorry inverse Laplace transform a bit later. So this is all the notation. So whenever we write like this, that means for x of t, x of s is the Laplace transform, and for x of s, x of t is the inverse Laplace transform. Similarly, if I write L and within brackets x of t, we are taking Laplace transform of x of t, that is equal to x of s, and L inverse represents inverse Laplace transform. So this is the notation you should remember, and then yeah, here. Uh, and and one more yeah one one obvious thing to note is x of s is a function of s so is a function of the parameter s where s is equal to some complex number e plus j omega. Yeah. So uh, let's let's see the the relation between Fourier transform and Laplace transform. We were saying that Laplace transform is a generalization of the Fourier transform. So le let us think about that a bit, and we will also see that in an example. Right. So. Uh, Let S is equal to J omega. Right. Uh, let me write this. Let sigma is equal to zero. So that S is equal to J omega. Then what happens to our Laplace transform? Laplace transform is this. So I'm just writing this the Laplace transform again. X of t e power minus s t t t. That becomes x of j omega becomes s of j x of j omega is minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e power minus j omega t, t, t right simply i have substituted s is equal to j omega see s s is in general a complex number sigma plus j omega but i just put the real part of s is equal to zero then it became what is this this is the four electron Form of Fourier transform of some. right? So that means Fourier transform of x of t is equal to Laplace transform of x of t. With s is equal to j omega. That means x of j omega is x of s when we put s is equal to j omega. Right? So you should you should remember this. This is a this is a very useful fact. This helps you to solve some of the Good problems in this area. Right? So this is the relation between Laplace transform and Fourier transform. If you are given Laplace transform and so th that Laplace transform will be in terms of S. And so if you put S is equal to J omega, you will simply get Fourier transform. Of course, if it exists. So caution is caution. Fourier transform of x of t may or 
may not exist. We'll also see may not exist. That meaning x of t can be infinity. See if the if the Fourier transform does not converge. See if if the integral. So consider the Fourier transform x of j omega. X of j omega is given by this integral. Integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of t blah blah whatever. Right. So if this integral does not converge to a finite value, and if it diverges to infinity, we say that the Fourier transform does not exist. For the Fourier transform to exist, we need this integral to converge to some value, some complex value, real value, whatever. Right. So if it does not converge and it's, if it simply becomes infinity, we say that the Fourier transform does not exist. So here, when I say the Fourier transform is given by the Laplace transform by putting value of s equal to j omega, what does it mean is it, it, it is true only if, if the Fourier transform exists, the Fourier transform does not convert, does not diverge to infinity, otherwise it also becomes infinity, right? And, and, and let's, let's see one more interpretation. One more interpretation of Laplace transform. One more interpretation of Laplace transform in terms of Fourier transform is, is this. So so let's see what is that interpretation. So let me see if there is. Yeah. See, let's let's write the Fourier transform equation. X of s is minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e power minus s t d. So put s is equal to sigma plus j omega. J omega is minus infinity because s we said it is in general a complex quantity with its real part equal to sigma and imaginary part equal to omega. So let's put s is equal to sigma plus j omega so that it becomes x e power. minus sigma t e power minus j omega t. Can we write that? Because in place of s, I have substituted sigma plus j omega and then I can write them as product of two exponentials e power minus sigma t plus e power minus j omega t. Right? So, what is this? If you if you if you just look at this signal, this is the Fourier transform of so this is equal to Fourier transform of x of t into minus e power sorry into e power minus sigma t right. So, Laplace transform of x of t is the Fourier transform of x of t multiplied by e power minus sigma. Or, or to be to be more exact, we can say this Laplace transform of x of t 
that s is equal to sigma plus j omega is the Fourier transform of x of t multiplied by e power minus e power t. Yes. So this this fact will be very useful for us at least immediately like this this fact is is useful in general but we will use this more rigorously in the next few minutes in in evaluating one or two we will evaluate some three examples now right so you you understood this see this is simply we have written x of s definition of laplace transform which is a x of s is equal to minus integral of this and then we simply put s value as omega. Omega. so i have taken out the real part here so this is it yeah so uh, next we will yeah we will we'll do we will do some examples so you 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 have to note down this one this one is very important and then this one this one is very important this j omega this I can write this as sigma greater than minus k or this I can also write this as s plus a for real part of s greater than minus a because see here I, I can club this sigma plus j omega sigma plus j omega becomes s and a remains as a and real part of s so the, the condition is real part of s greater than minus a or sigma greater than minus a. Okay. See, we, 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 are, we are moving back and forth between s and s is equal to sigma plus j omega. So wherever, in, in some cases, we are simply writing it as s, in some cases, in place of s, we are putting sigma plus j omega, right? So, so Laplace transform of e power minus a t u of t is given by this, but but it it exists along with this condition that real part of s greater than minus a. If real if if real part of s is not greater than minus a, then the Laplace transform does not exist. It simply becomes infinity and and that, that becomes meaningless. Like we cannot say that Laplace transform is infinity. We should say where it converges to some finite value and state that finite value. Right? So, uh, so we, we, we have taken almost a roundabout approach Now, now let's let's take another so okay and and just just for convenience I'll write x of j omega also below this is equal to one by j omega plus a and for a greater than what was that okay. A greater than zero. Let's 
so this is for this is for x of t is equal to e power minus a t e of t right so we will we will do uh, another example and and i want to take just uh, two minute break right so i'll i'll keep my video muted and i'll be back in exactly like maybe two to three minutes So, yeah, I, I hope I'm still sharing my, my screen. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, let's do another example. Example two is this. Let's do x of t is equal to minus e power minus a t u of minus t. What about this? So, so if you if, if you try to find this, find x of s. Sorry, uh, x of s is what? So I I guess you 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 can try to find this. This is minus infinity to plus infinity. So I am putting this minus sign outside the integral. E power minus a t u of t e power minus s t d t. So this is equal to minus. I will keep the same minus sign. Yeah. Now what should be the limits of the integral? Okay. So, what do you think the limits of the integral? The, the, the integral limits are from 0 to infinity or minus infinity to 0 or minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, sorry, uh, here it should be u of minus t because here, here it is minus t, right? So, this u of minus t is, is nothing but a signal say u of minus t it, it, it exists in the negative direction it exists in the negative direction so that meaning the integral is non-zero only from minus infinity to zero and on the positive side the integral becomes zero so this is from minus infinity to zero power minus a t e power minus s t so this this I can I can write these two things together as e power minus s plus a into t dt right so let us say for what values of s this will converge see be, before evaluating the integral so one thing is just doing the integral, but but that is wrong unless you state for what values of s the integral converges. Right? You should you should always keep that in mind. So let's let's put s is equal to s is equal to sigma plus j omega, so that this will be j omega is equal to minus minus infinity to 0 e power minus sigma plus a t e power minus j omega t, t, t see simply I have put s is equal to I did put s is equal to sigma plus j omega right so so that this 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 exponential becomes e power minus of sigma plus a into t e power minus j omega t dt. 
Now observe that this t takes only negative values in e power minus sigma plus a into t. T takes only negative values because t is being varied from minus infinity to zero. So the t takes only negative values as t as t varies from minus infinity to zero. Right. So the the integral converges. That means this exponential will become decaying exponential only for sigma plus a is less than zero. When 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 sigma plus so t is already minus, so this becomes e power plus sigma plus a into t. So for this integral to convert, we need a negative sign, and for that we need sigma plus a should be less than zero. So the integral converges. only if sigma plus a is less than 0. Right? That means if real part of s is less than minus a. So now, now, now let's back to the integral equal to minus of minus infinity to 0 e power minus s plus k into t dt that is equal to again 1 by s plus a but in this case it converges only if real part of s is less than minus a. Right. So, Laplace transform of x of t is equal to minus e power minus a t u of minus t. Is given by x of s is equal to 1 by s plus a. And this is true yeah. now now let's see a couple of interesting points here right hope hope you you understood whatever we did what we did was uh, we have taken two exponentials and then we found the Laplace transform for both and then we, we not only found the Laplace transform but, but we also found where the Laplace transform becomes a finite value and we stated that that along with the value of the integral. Yeah. So now Now let's consider these two things. So, first, for x of t is equal to e power minus a t u of t, we have x of s. So the Laplace transform, if we if you simply look at x of s, it is one by s plus a here. So, so let, 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 let me write remark 1. x of s is equal to 1 by s plus a. And real part of s is greater than minus a. For x of t is equal to power minus a t 
Yeah. And x of s is equal to 1 by s plus a. Real part of s is less than minus a. So at x of t equal to minus e power minus a t u of minus 2. C. So this meaning that if you consider only this term, if you consider only x of s, these both the things are same for two different signals. Have you seen that? So whether I take x of t is equal to e power minus a t u t or if I take x of t equal to minus e power minus a t into u of minus t. So whether I take this signal or whether I take this signal, this I am getting the Laplace transform as 1 by s plus a. Okay. So where is the difference? But this Laplace transform converges only when real part of s is greater than minus a and this Laplace transform converges when real part of s is less than minus a. That means two signals can have the same expression for x of s but the, the range of values over which they converge will be different. Right? So the range of values the range of values of s over which x of s converges is called region of convergence. And it is simply abbreviated as RMOC. So that means in this region where real part of s is greater than minus a this laplace transform of this signal converges right and and for this signal x of t equal to minus e power minus a t into u of minus t the laplace transform converges in the region where real part of s is less than minus c. Right? So, ROC for ROC in the first case was real part of s greater than minus a and, and ROC in the second case is real part of S less than minus A. So two signals can have the same expression for X of S. Two signals can have the same expression 1 by S plus A and 1 by S plus A or, or something else for, for its Laplace transform but their ROCs will be different. So that's why if, if I give you only my Laplace transform is x of s is equal to 1 by s plus a, then you don't know whether, whether, whether the signal corresponds to this minus e, e to the power minus a t u of minus t or whether it corresponds to plus e to the power minus a t into u of t. Right? So I should specify the ROC along with x of s. So, both ROC and X of S will not be the same for two different signals. You understood? So, so, 
so two different signals can have <coughs> the same Laplace transform x surface but their ROCs be different that's that's what I'm, I'm trying to say Their ROCs will be different. Hence, it is essential to state ROC. to state the region of convergence when giving the Laplace transform of any signal. Right? So it, it, it is always when you are asked to give Laplace transform, you should give expression for x of s and the region of convergence both you should you should give both the region of convergence and the expression for x of s so that's that's one one one, one of the very important aspects and yeah and then uh, it, it it is generally it, it is also convenient to show roc as uh, as as a diagram like they they will say most of the times they will say plot the ROC or, or show the ROC. So, uh, uh, how do you, what should I say? Representing ROC through a diagram. So let's let's consider this. So we, we, we can represent our voices on on S plane. So we let's let's remember that S is equal to sigma plus J omega. So I can we we will think of something called S plane where this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. Let the x-axis denotes the real value of s and let the imaginary axis denote the imaginary value of s. That means this, this denotes the sigma value and denotes the imaginary axis, the, the, the y-axis denotes omega. It's, it's the j omega and, and it's the sigma. So, how do we represent real part of S greater than minus A on this? So let, let, let us say this is minus A and then real part of S greater than minus A is all this region. So this all this region is real part of S greater than minus A. Because this is the real part of S, right? So this is simply real part of S and this imaginary part of S. So this is real part of S greater than minus A. So the, the, the region of convergence is simply there is minus A, real part of S is equal to minus A and, and in this region, like when, wherever the real part of S is greater than minus A, we are having the, the Laplace transform to converge to a finite value and 
that's why we we shared this we shared this region with something like this right so this is roc representing roc on s plane so this this word s plane is is important so similarly what is right so similarly consider real part of s less than minus a so put minus a here and first always label this this is the imaginary axis this is the real axis and this is minus a and we want the the roc the region of convergence is real part of s less than minus a so that means this is the region So this extends from minus infinity to from minus infinity to minus a is the ROC region of convergence, right? So in 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 this case, this is minus a to plus infinity. See how this. So this is representing ROC on an S plane. Right? So what 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 we studied we, we, we studied about finding Laplace transform and finding the region where it converges. Okay. Now uh, we, we we have one more point to one more point to discuss. That is, we said that Laplace transform is the generalization of Fourier transform. What do we mean by that? Right? We we still have to we still have to consider that. What do we mean by Laplace transform is a generalization of the Fourier transform? So for that, let's go back uh, to to the first example. So another remark. Then we will do two more examples. Another remark is uh, x of s is one by s plus a, where real part of s is greater than minus a, and x of j omega. Equal to one by j omega plus a, where uh, a greater than zero. So this is the Laplace transform. This is the Fourier transform of, of x of t equal to e power minus a t u of t. Right. So, in in the first example, if you if you, if you just see this, see here, we have taken. Okay, hope hope you are able to see now. So x of t is equal to e power minus a t into u of t, and then for that the Laplace transform is one by s plus a, and it it exists for real part of s greater than minus a, and for the same signal, the Fourier transform is one by j omega plus a, and a greater than zero, and 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 it exists 
and the Fourier transform exists only for a greater than zero, right? That's the the, the same thing. I'm trying to write a fresh here. So the Fourier transform exists uh, only when a greater than zero, right? But Laplace transform exists even for negative values of zero, or when, right? So. Laplace transform exists even for even for negative. What, what, what does the Laplace transform requires? It requires that the real part of S should be greater than minus A. So it doesn't care what, what is the value of A. Right? See, in, in, in this signal, in this signal e power minus A T U of T, this A can be anything for Laplace transform. Right? And and, and the Laplace transform exists for, for real part of S greater than minus A. But whereas for, for Fourier transform, the Fourier transform exists only if this A is greater than 0. It does not exist for A equal to 0 or A less than 0. Right? So, For the same signal, even if the Fourier transform does not exist for a is equal to zero or or a less than zero, the Laplace transform exists. If you see the the example, one. so if if a is less than zero or if a equal to zero, the Fourier transform does not exist because the integral of this signal, when multiplied with e power minus j omega t t t a and then integrating it, it won't converge. But the Laplace transform converges. So in that sense, even in in even for different signals, so uh, say for, for 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 example, consider a is equal to minus three. So if if I if I consider so if x of t equal to e power 3t ut for x of t equal to e power 3t ut Fourier transform does not exist. But Laplace transform is Laplace transform and and what what is Laplace transform is equal to one by s minus three this this is the Laplace transform for this
Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we 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 quickly move on to an, another example, and then yeah, maybe I can I can give this as as okay. So. Yeah, bit better. So take take x of t equal to e power three t u t. And find x of s. So, so that that mean you 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 are asked to verify this. Okay, yeah, and then and an, another homework is simply find Laplace transform of u of t from Laplace transform of e power minus a t. So you should not find u of t by evaluating the integral and all. You should be able to quickly use the Laplace transform of e power minus a t into u of t to find the Laplace transform of u of t. Okay. So and and then. And then another thing is. If x of t is another example, this this example, I will give you the solution in the next class. U of t minus two e power minus t u of t. Find x of t. Surface and its others. Yeah. So this is one. This is two. This is three. So this this second exercise is just two minutes. It won't take more than two minutes because I asked you to use the existing Laplace transform obtained for e power minus a t u t, and then using that you have to find Laplace transform of u of t. The first one is you have to find Laplace transform of e power three t u t, and means that 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 means I want you to verify this whether this is correct or not, right? And the third one is if you are given x of t is a combination of two signals. Now it's a combination of two signals. What will be the Laplace transform? So you you find the Laplace transform of this signal, and you find the Laplace transform of this signal, both separate. But it may have one region of convergence, it may have another region of convergence. Then you have to say what is the final region of convergence? What is what is the region of convergence for this entire? Signal? 